Good evening. Uh, hope everybody's had a very blessed day and enjoyed the pretty weather. From what they're saying, we'll probably get some wet weather again for the next day and a half or so. But uh, anyway, here we are getting ready. I guess the water will get the grass turning green and uh, have everybody mowing come next weekend. So I appreciate you joining me this evening as we're going to go into the anointing part 12. And tonight we're going to look at the anointing, which I've mentioned over a period of times, is about it being tangible. And uh, uh, when I use the word tangible, if you look it up in the Webster's Dictionary, uh, the first one, the main uh, usage of that word is capable of being perceived especially by the sense of touch in other words uh, you know when you touch something um, uh, you can leave something on there so uh, without any further ado let's uh, if you've got your bible once you get your bible and turn to acts chapter 19 and we're going to look at some scripture and uh, and see just uh, what it, the anointing, the Holy Spirit uh, being inside of us as being tangible. In uh, Acts chapter 19, let's start with the second verse in Paul. And he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether they be any Holy Ghost. In other words, these people, uh, they had heard about, well, let's read the next verse, verse 3. And he said unto them, uh, What then were you baptized? And they said unto John's baptism. And verse 4, then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him, which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid, verse 6, when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied, and all the men were about twelve. In other words, when Paul laid hands, the, the anointing that was on Paul, these people had repented, but they didn't, they didn't realize what they had access to, because they had repented. Uh, John the Baptist, uh, who was preaching out in the wilderness and uh, uh, to, be, to repent of their sins and be baptized, which that was what they were doing. Then once Jesus came and was crucified and then ascended to heaven, and then on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came and filled the people. And from that point on, when a person accepts the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit inside of them uh, lives in them. And uh, uh, they didn't have no knowledge about that. So Paul taught them that because of Jesus, whom John was preaching about, had came, was crucified, resurrected and ascended to heaven then they accepted the Lord Jesus Christ that opened the door for them to receive the Holy Spirit and Paul laid hands on well we'll we'll see in just a little bit that uh, uh, he deposited in them what he had, which was the anointing, that was tangible. Now, I want you to look at verse, uh, same chapter, verse 11 and 12. And uh, 
they go on to ministry. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul, by the hands of Paul, so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, the diseases departed from them, and evil spirits went out of them. What did Paul do? They brought it people that were sick. They brought him a handkerchief or an apron. Let's say a handkerchief for the men, an apron for the women. And Paul would lay hands on that anointing inside of Paul, that anointing inside of you, that anointing inside of me is tangible. And so when Paul laid hands on those pieces of cloth, whether it be a handkerchief, whether it be an apron, and it was tucked back to people that were sick with diseases or even demonically possessed, those people received healing and deliverance. When they got their handkerchief and their apron back, um, you see, Paul was operating in the anointing of God. We're supposed to be doing the same thing and doing what God wants us to be doing, being where he was where God wanted him to be, doing what God wanted to be doing, and God was getting the glory of it. Um, you know, a lot of times... And I believe laying on hands. I believe that the anointing, when we lay hands on and we're doing it in faith, that sickness will leave, that people will recover. And sometimes it may take a period of time. Sometimes we have to work with people to get their faith level up so that, that they can receive what God is trying to do for them. He's done paid the price for our healing. And uh, let me show you something that's even more amazing. Back up to chapter 5 of the book of Acts. Chapter 5. And we're going to look at verses 12 through 16. And by the hands of the apostle were many signs and wonders wrought among people, and they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. And of the rest, there's no man joined himself to them, but the people magnified them. The believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes, both men and women. See, when people are getting healed and people are getting set free, that will be a testimony to the power of God. And so these people, they were watching people get healed. In verse 15, insomuch that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. And there came a multitude out of the city round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks, and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they healed every one. Wow. The shadow, just the shadow, of Peter. Peter was walking in, in chapter 5, Peter was walking in such anointing of God that his shadow crossing over sick people laying on the side of the street or sidewalk that they got healed. Now that is the power of God. And uh, I mean, 
there again, in verse 16, the very last, uh, that they, the, all the sick folks that were brought and vexed with unclean spirits, they were healed every one. That is overflowing anointing of God through a person that has yielded themselves unto the Lord. It's like I related here a while back of, of the pastor down in Clearwater, Florida, uh, after uh, he had invited back before Rodney Harrod Brown became a citizen of the uh, United States and uh, to his church and the anointing had got so strong on him that he could be at a store and people standing in line to check out would start crying and asking how they could be saved and he had not even said a word to them or anything. Now this was one of his members that uh, told us this. And uh, and so, um, you know, when you hear something like that, God is not a respecter of persons, which we've read that previously. And what he will do through a person, for a person, depends on the person releasing faith into it, you know. We have to uh, we have to believe the word of God, and if we believe the word of God, Jesus said nothing, nothing is impossible with those that believe God. Nothing, and yet uh, God gets glory when people are healed. And uh, I want you to go to Second Timothy. Uh, chapter 1. I'm going to look a little bit here. Second Timothy chapter 1. <clears throat> now Paul is writing a letter to Timothy because Paul had, uh, had helped Timothy become a pastor of a church there and um, and, and Timothy was struggling and having been, you know, pastoring is not an easy jo job. It's, it's not an easy thing to do. Uh, about the time you think everything's going good, the devil will throw a, a monkey wrench into it and, and all types of chaos will break out. And, and uh, you know, we have to pray and we have to love the people and, and try to encourage the people, and sometimes people accept it, and sometimes people will reject it. And we do the best that we can do, and hopefully we all, all ministers, can succeed and be successful for the Lord Jesus and uh, build uh, God's church up and bring it together and everything. In uh, 2 Timothy, uh, chapter 1, let's read verses 5 through 7. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois, and thy mother Eunice, and I'm persuaded that in thee also. Now, Paul's telling Timothy, he said, I know your grandmother, she was a a woman of faith. I know your mother, she was a woman of faith, and I believe that you are a person of faith. And then he, he goes into verse 6, Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on of my hands, for God have not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And what Paul was saying was, Timothy, I know your grandmother, I know your mama, they full of faith, and 
and I believe you are too. Why? Because I even laid hands on you. And I believe that when, as a pastor, as a minister, whether it's in church, whether it's in somebody's home, when I lay hands, when if I anoint with oil, if I pray with them, I believe what I've asked for for that person or that family is done. I mean, it is done. They are uh, whatever they, if it's asking for healing, if it's asking for uh, reconciliation, whatever it may be, I don't care whether it's a cold, a COVID, or cancer, or leukemia, or AIDS, or any other type of sickness. I believe that just as Jesus said that whatever we ask in his name, it shall be done unto them. And I, and that's why, uh, and that's why when, just like Paul, he said, by laying on my hands, Paul said, I imparted something into you, Timothy. And I believe the same thing is that when, when I uh, join hands with somebody or I lay my hands, whether it be just a finger or two fingers on their forehead and anoint them with oil, I believe that the same anointing for healing it is flowing through me from God. I don't get no glory. It's not me that does it. God's the healer. God is the one that answers the prayers. God is the one that paid for our sins. God is the one that paid for our healing. And so this is his glory. When we pray for somebody, they receive and hallelujah. Thank God. You know, thank God that we can look here and see that Peter did the same thing that he walked in the fullness of the anointing of God, that his shadow touching people and they would be healed. Paul could touch their cloth or a piece of cloth or an apron and the people that received it would be healed. I, uh, you know, um, many years ago I taught about the, the anointing being tangible and uh, one of the members at that time had had was working at a local factory, and uh, uh, and it dawned on him that if the anointing is tangible, why not just start touching all the handles and the buttons where people were touch uh, working that were doing it because most of them weren't saved. And uh, in a matter of just a week or two, uh, one of his, this person's co-workers wanted to know, started asking him questions about the Lord. And this person had been touching that co-worker's machine and I, and I told him, I said, that is the anointing that is tangible. That you're leaving a trace of God's anointing on whatever you touch. If I touch this desk, if I touch this chair, if I come in your house and I sit down on your sofa or in your uh, chair, that anointing is left there. And I've told people before that when teaching about the anointing being tangible and you're around somebody that's sick or you're around somebody that's not saved, not been born again, you sit where they sit. And when you do, you thank God for that anointing that is on you to get on them, that you're leaving a traces of that anointing that is going to affect that person. And if that person is sick, that that anointing that you are leaving 
is going to heal their bodies completely. I've said this many a time in the past few weeks. We've got entirely too many people that are going through all types of sickness. And it irks me beyond all means because I know that I know that I know that the Word of God is true. And by His stripes, we, which includes all those on our prayer list, present, future, and past, for their healing. And sometimes we got to speak it. Sometimes we got to speak that for our health. Like I said last night, am I afraid of getting COVID? No. I wash my hands. I try to be, uh, uh, I believe in being clean and everything. And, uh, and occasionally I wear masks. If I need to, I don't like to wear them, but uh, to comply with certain stores, to be able to go in, I, I do comply. And, uh, but I know that the anointing inside of me, you have to know that you know what you got. How many times, you know, I've worked for several different companies over the years. I've worked for some big companies and I've worked for, for some small companies. And I haven't worked for a great deal of many companies because most time uh, when I go to a place to work, I stay there. I don't bounce around from job to job to job to job. Uh, it's just like where I'm at right now. I'm going on 18 years being there. And uh, uh, does it have the benefits that I would like to see it have? No. Could they offer more? Probably. Will they? Possibly in the future, but it all depends on the economy. But there is certain jobs, say like if you work in the government, that you have a lot of different benefits, everything from 401, your, your retirement plan, uh, to your health, your dental, your eye, and, uh, and all that. Vacation, uh, short-term disability, long-term disability, uh, extra vacation days that can be built up. And, uh, but what if you don't never use it? What if instead of you using your health insurance, you just went ahead and paid out of your own pocket. What good is that insurance then? If you go to the dentist and you've got dental insurance and instead you pay the bill instead of letting the insurance pay the bill, what good is it? As the Bible says in the Old Testament, for lack of knowledge, my people perish. Now, God said that. And there's truth in that. What you don't know can kill you. You have to learn. You have to get in the Word. And, uh, you know, uh, I have, uh, I couldn't tell you how many people that I've given healing tapes to or given them books on healing that were going through sickness. Why? To help them to get a, a foundation to help build their faith so that they can overcome their sickness. Now, just like uh, that person's co-worker, that family started coming to church for a while. All because this person started understanding that the anointing was tangible. We go into places like Lowe's, go into Walmart, go into Hobby Lobby, you go into convenience stores, opening doors, picking up products, not realizing 
that everything we touch leaves a trace of us. You go in to a store and you pick up something. And if something was to happen, they could take that item that you picked up and could be able to identify you uh, through forensics as to uh, or be your fingerprints or not. You don't see them when you touch some. Now you might if you touch a window. How many has ever washed the windows, got a nice crystal clear, especially storm door, and here comes the kids and both hands right on the door and you see them handprints on there. And you're thinking, as hard as a trap. We well, see that's just, that is their tangible fingerprints or handprints being left on the door glass. Just the same thing. We have to, we have to be thinking about it when we do it. I mean, we go around, we pick up stuff, and we don't think nothing about it. But when, if you start thinking about it, you know, Lord, Lord, this person I'm working with, Lord, this is their equipment that they use, and Lord, I thank you right now that the anointing that I am leaving a trace of is going to affect them. It's going to change their life. They're going to come to you, Lord Jesus, and learn of you and know you and accept you. That's why, you know, we may we can't see it with the naked eye, but just like with forensic, they can take a little bit of nothing that you can't hardly even see that's visible and and make a case to prosecute somebody that may have committed a crime. Well, just think how much more tangible the anointing the Holy Spirit is inside of you. Remember, Jesus said, out of your belly shall flow rivers, plural, rivers of living water, speaking of the Holy Spirit, which was yet to come. Well, those spam calls. And so, you know, we have to, we have to be conscious of the Holy Spirit inside of us. You don't see the Holy Spirit, do you? You know, Jesus, they seen the Holy Spirit come down on him like a dove. And in the upper room, it sounded like a rushing mighty wind with cloven tongues of fire setting upon the 120 people that was there in one accord. Yet, in due time, if you walk with God long enough, you will learn to recognize the Holy Spirit at work inside of you. You'll recognize when he directs you. You know, the Bible says the steps of the righteous are appointed. Well, how are they appointed? God uses the Holy Spirit to guide us. He gives us uh, the desire to call people or go by and see somebody. Uh, it's just like me. I'm an example of what God can do. Because he took me, I was an alcoholic, and stone cold sober from day one that I accepted Lord Jesus Christ. And that's been uh, 31 years uh, this August.
or September. And uh, uh, I know that what's inside of me changed me completely. I didn't say I'm perfect. I have my flaws. God works on me every day. And yet I know that the Spirit of God inside of me is the same Spirit that was in Jesus, that was in Peter, that was in jo uh, Paul, that was in John, in all the apostles. I know the same Spirit. We read that last night the, when we looked at the different, different, gifts, motivational and everything and all that is that it's the same spirit that profit with all. And, uh, you know, spending time researching, spending time praying, spending time studying, getting in the word, that builds your faith and as you build your faith and your faith increases you know that's last night you can increase your faith or you can decrease your faith and uh, and I, it's like i've told a lot of people that whose spouse was was lost and i mean sometimes uh, people's spouse would uh, like living with the devil. And we've anointed cloths, and I've told them, hey, slip it under the cushion. Slip it under that person's side of the bed. And thank God, every time they sit down or they lay down, that anointing is going to touch them and work on them and uh, and like i said sometimes just getting their just sit in their chair and waller in it because you're just leaving that anointing that is on you all over and uh, uh that anoint and, and then the next thing you know if you do it sooner or later that person is either going to change chairs or are they going to want what you've got? And you won't have to preach a message to them. You won't have to do nothing. All you do is sit back and smile and thank God. Just get on them. Lord, just touch them. Holy Spirit, do your wonderful work. And, uh, you know, but if you don't know what you have, how can you use it? You can't. And it's all by faith in the Word of God. It's all by faith. And that's like Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please God, for he is a re-rewarder re to those that diligently seek him. In other words, when you keep just, you just keep being persistent with God, Lord, I thank you, Lord. Kill me. Thank you, Lord. Kill me. Thank you, Lord. Lord, save them. Lord, use me. The anointing get on them. And next thing you know, health's restored, etc., etc. I mean, it comes by getting in the Word of God. And uh, we have... Uh, what we have read tonight had not yet been written when the apostles were doing this, when Peter was doing that, when Paul was doing that. But it was recorded and later compiled and put in. Of course, Timothy, that was a letter that Paul wrote to Timothy. They didn't have the, the King James Bible back then. 
and it was uh, different types of material they used to write letters and stuff on that finally was compiled together so that we have the complete Word of God. And Jesus is the same today as he was then, as he will be tomorrow and forevermore. So God don't change. The Holy Spirit don't change. God the Father don't change. Jesus don't change. What changes is us. We can change for the better, or we can change for the worse, or we can just not change at all. But if we will get in the Word and start seeking whatever you have need of, whatever you have. Remember, Paul said today is the day of salvation, and salvation is whatever you have need of. If you're broke, salvation is your prosperity. If you're sick, salvation is your health. If you are uh, going through spiritual depression, guess what? Salvation will cause the depression to leave the oppressor, Satan himself. And uh, it gives God honor and glory. That's why we have to we have to picture in our mind how the Holy Spirit is inside of us. And when we're walking close enough to God, when we're walking in the fullness, people will be able to tell the difference. If we are walking in the flesh, people can tell if we're walking in the flesh. To be carnal minded is death, but to be spiritual minded is life. And we're to be full of life. So if you know somebody that's going through sickness, you lay hands on and and thank God that that anointing the, of the Holy Spirit that is inside of you touched that person right now. If you know somebody that is lost and you want to see them get saved and they're in your household, you lay hands on wherever or sit wherever they sit, lay hands on whatever they pick up and look at, if it's a remote, if it's a, a PlayStation or a laptop or iPad or computer, you get on, you lay hands on it. Let that anointing be tangible. And thank God that when you lay hands, you thank God when you lay hands, that anointing is going to make the difference. And if you'll believe it, just as what we've read here, if the shadow of Peter can heal people, if Paul just laying hands on a cloth can heal people, Jesus said, greater works shall we do than he because he was going to go to the Father. And the Father would send the Comforter the Holy Spirit that dwells in his people. So stir up that gift, just as Paul told Timothy, stir up that. Remind yourself, Timothy, it is, it's just like Paul saying, Timothy, remember, I laid hands on you. I know the impartation of the Holy Spirit that's in you because I've got it, and when I laid hands on you, you've got it. And we have to come to that faithful knowledge that the same thing, those that, that I've laid hands on, I believe you're healing. 
is taking place right now. Those in times past, I've seen it happen. And God, again, is not a respecter of person. If Paul, if, if Jesus could use Peter, he could use me, he can use you, he used Paul, he used all the other disciples and made them into apostles who went out and started churches that brought in pastors, which like Timothy, and they laid hands on people. We do the same thing. That's why a lot of times I, I anoint with oil. All that oil is is symbolic of what is already inside and already being applied. It's just a little extra symbolism of what we're doing. So, build that faith up and see what God will do through you, for you, with you, by you. Why? Because God wants you. Jesus said in St. John chapter 10, verse 10, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And he's done a good job of it. Jesus said, but I come that you might have and might have life more abundantly. Don't mean that you're going to be a millionaire or wealthy, but you'll always have enough. God is a God of increase. He says, if you're faithful in a few things, I'll make you ruler over much. God knows we're not perfect. That's why he's not looking for perfect people, but he's perfecting people that are imperfect. And that's why it takes the Holy Spirit inside of us. Learn what you got, then lay hands and start using that a tangible Holy Spirit inside of you and see what happens. Well, I hope that you've got something out of this. And if you're ever in doubt about being tangible, Go wash your window, get it good and crystal clear, and then put your handprint up there. Even after you've washed your hand, and you'll see your handprint. And let that be a reminder that inside of you, the Holy Spirit is tangible. That whatever you touch, you're leaving a spiritual trail so to speak. Well, I get excited talking about that, and, and, it, and it's something that we all need to refresh ourselves over, and uh, I remember it hadn't done it, and I know this is why God is just refreshing me, as well as all of those that are watching, uh, how we had anointed the the doorpost, the threshold, everything, the doorknobs in the church and the windows and everything, that, that the Spirit of God would make a difference by people coming in. Parking lot, that's God's property. Guess what? Holy Spirit touched the people that pass by. Activate your faith. Turn that light switch on and say, Lord, if you did it for them, you can do it for me. And it's not that he can't. It's by our faith that he wants to. So, as always, I invite you that if you've never accepted the Lord Jesus, today is a good day to invite Jesus Christ into your life. If you backslid on God, God is waiting with open arms to, to love you back in. 
to the household of God. And he came that none should perish, but everyone have everlasting life. So make that choice and, and just pray that simple prayer. Lord, forgive me of all my sins and Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit. And I mean, confess it with your mouth, believe it in your heart and God will do the work necessary. Well, with that said and done, I want to remind you to join us Sunday morning at Mountain Harvest Church at 11 o'clock or 10 minutes after 11, really, is when we get go live on Facebook. And uh, also, you can catch us on YouTube, Mountain Harvest Church, Pastor Randy Brewer. And uh, you can go on there. You can look up all the different uh, messages and Bible studies and catch up if you're behind. Got any questions, feel free to, to send me a message or call me or uh, get in contact with me. And Because the last thing I want is for somebody to not understand. Because when you don't understand, how can you use what you don't understand? You have to believe. And so... That said, let's just pray. Father God, we come to you in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, I just thank you right now that all those that have been going through sickness right now, Lord God, the anointing, the Holy Spirit inside of them, drive that sickness out of their bodies. Health be restored, Lord just like your word said. And Lord God, help us to be mindful of the anointing being tangible, just as it was with Paul, it was with Peter, and it is with us, Lord God. And help us to do your will and your work and give you all the honor and glory, Lord God. Because Lord, it's you that paid their sin debt. It's you that paid for a healing. It's you that gives us the ability to live a good life. And so, Lord God, we just ask this in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, again, come join us if you can Sunday. We'd love to have you be part of us. And, uh, and if there's anything we can do, uh, need to be prayed for, let us know. We will add you to our prayer list and, and be praying for you every day. And that you receive your healing or whatever it is that you have need of. Well, God bless. And as Pastor Andy Brewer and wife Judy, we love you. We appreciate you and uh, pray for God to just bless you throughout the rest of this week and look forward to seeing you Sunday. Amen.